Robert, how is additive manufacturing influencing the design and development of medical devices? Now, with additive manufacturing, we could do more complex shapes we never could before, and our time to market without the heavy investment and timelines associated with casting, diffusion, bonding, and sintering allows us to look at geometries, implant configurations, very mechanical properties in ways we never could have conceived of before. Which is your favorite application of additive in uh, the medical device field? Well, my favorite application would be uh, implants, medical device implants, hip replacements and knee replacements. We try to get survivorship and longevity of our implants for decades. If we can make implants smaller, thinner, we may be able to remove less patient's bone to receive the implant and at the same time reduce the incision and the overall time of the procedure. What are some of the challenges implant manufacturers would face in, in this area? And the challenge right now with additive manufacturing first has to do with cost. Additive manufacturing is not easy to get into. At Stryker, we've invested in a facility with greater than 20 pieces of additive manufacturing um, equipment with people that are extremely talented that know how to operate the equipment, know the preventive maintenance. Uh, from the point of view of best practices for device manufacturers, those who are interested in uh, using additive manufacturing techniques, would you recommend any best practices for them? Everybody falls in love with the grandeur and the theory of additive manufacturing. It doesn't just plug in the wall and then you're good to go. There's a lot of facility requirements, there's gas flows, preventive maintenance, powder storage. There's also design estimation software is available that will allow us to look at what's the maximum or the minimum thickness, what are the mechanical properties we want to be out and help with the overall design to reduce the amount of time of prototyping.